Mm. You mentioned before mental health. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of research in the last, you know, 48 hours. Uh, and it's not hard to find stories out there. There's um, an NFL doco about someone who's had a concussion um, and mental health issues. But I'll read the stats because I don't want to butcher it. But according to neuropsychologist Professor Vicky Anderson from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute, half of concussions within children are sport related. So that goes back to what you said earlier is like you can get a concussion by doing everyday things as well. But like half of them are in the sporting context. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit scary. Um, but her... Uh, Professor Anderson and her team published a peer review journal article in the British Journal of Sports Medicine exploring the relationship between childhood concussion and mental health, finding that children with concussion experienced more mental health difficulties compared to the controlled group. I then read an article that mentioned that a third of under 18s who have had a concussion develop a mental health condition afterwards that could last years after the incident. Mm -hmm. So that's one third of these kids mm -hmm. de can, like are developing a mental health issue, which is terrifying. Mm -hmm. And in that, like Brain Injury Australia have collated some research um, saying that half the people with traumatic brain injury, so this is not just children, half the people develop depression within a year and nearly two thirds of people develop depression within seven years of having a concussion or a traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. That is terrifying. I think just to put some context behind the Brain Injury Australia one, is that referring to traumatic brain injury overall yeah. regardless of severity? Yeah, so I think obviously when you have more severe traumatic brain injuries, the likelihood of that would be higher. Yes, because the functioning but, yeah. of your normal lifestyle is less. Yeah, completely compromised. But but obviously in mild traumatic brain injury as well, the prevalence is still very high, of course. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I guess like relating that back to the sporting context, there's a few stories that uh, stood out to me when researching um, that are, you know, within the last kind of few years. Uh, again, I'm going to bring the AFL mm -hmm. into it I, because they're maybe the most public in mm -hmm. terms of the stories. Like people would probably know these stories or have seen them or remember them when I say it. Uh, Jacinda Barkley was an AFLW player. She played baseball and I think American football overseas as well. Mm -hmm. So she's like an elite sportswoman. Um, her autopsy found significant white matter changes after she was found dead in 2020, mm. a suspected suicide. Mm. So we look at that and you're like, okay, wow, like you mentioned before about white matter and how it could change. That's the, that's one thing that's like terrifying, but that's not even the only example you look at. And this is, I was talking about this earlier. We look at Danny Frawling, AFL player who sustained 20 concussions, approximately, mm. maybe more, uh, within his AFL career. He died in 2019 from a car crash. Now, I went through the coroner's report, which is not a great thing to do on a Saturday morning, but mm. I read through the whole thing um, this morning and it went through how he had been suffering depression for the years and prior and his mental health mm. was, you know, examined in his in the report um, at the time of his death they found multiple drugs in his system that treat antidepressants there mm -hmm. was no alcohol or like other mm -hmm. substances that would suggest like substance abuse in there so that's one thing um, his brain was actually donated to the Australian Sports Brain Bank where they found chronic traumatic and <laughs> help me say this one encephalopathy Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. So mouthful. Um, and it was actually stated in the report's conclusion, the weight of the available evidence supports a finding that Mr. Frawley intentionally took his own life. So mm. yes, it was a car crash, mm. but 
it, that like that one too was ruled by a suicide and in terms of like chronic encephalopathy can you tell us what that is because i looked at that and i was like i have no idea Enceph encephalopathy encephalopathy yeah um basically yeah, for, for lack of a better term um encephalopathy is where we have um degeneration of the brain mm. or the brain tissue um one of the really interesting things here and i guess it's quite unfortunate for many of these yeah i mean like this is the worst case situation um cte chronic traumatic encephalopathy, encephalopathy um or cte can't actually be diagnosed until an autopsy is done yeah so after so death. so it's very difficult to i guess understand where someone is in the disease progression mm -hmm. while they're still alive so really we can look at some things like um mental health brain function and then really looking back at the history of concussion or brain trauma um i guess to to see one's risk but yeah so what was your question sorry regarding like what is ct yeah what is it um it's essentially a neurodegenerative disease um like diseases are like alzheimer's for example yeah um, which can lead to dementia, um, CTE can, um, but it's caused or linked, linked very heavily back to repeated trauma of the head. And what does it do in terms of how the body functions or how the brain functions? What's it causing people or what mm. is it said? Because obviously it's not diagnosed until after an autopsy has been performed, but yeah. what's it suggested that it presents as? So for anyone who wants to like know a lot more on, or like how, some of the um or a good movie on like this is actually you remember that movie came out concussion yeah and it was about the the nfl the the football in uh in the states um looking at some of these players who or the autopsies who had committed suicide um or even some of the ones who are still alive now but really suffering you know poor mental health like severe mental health problems um so that you know, can can include behavioural problems, mood alterations, um, problems with general thought, cognition, and thinking, um, increased risk of suicidal ideal ideation, um, and often you know um, just poor response to general things, you know, mm -hmm. um, agitation. Unfortunately, many sufferers of this have been involved with. You know violent crime even you know it's really um i did see somewhere and i can't remember exactly so i'm not going to reference it mm. specifically but i read somewhere about somewhere in america um this guy got jailed for murder mm. but he, as a like college athlete he did american football mm. like who knows like we're not going to find out yeah, and, and obviously, you know, you, <laughs> it's a complicated case. Yeah. Um, and you can't obviously... Make those assumptions. It's very much. Multi you don't get to go to jail because you had CTE. Well, it's multifactorial, isn't it? Um, but did it contribute to... His behaviour. Poor behavioural decisions, impulsivity. Yeah. Um, who knows, you know. Um, but what's interesting is that this has been known for a long time, uh, or the, the, the general syndrome of chronic traumatic encep encephalopathy has been uh we've seen the symptoms of it for a long time mm. and it used to be referred to as and it still is like punch drunk syndrome you know Boxing. or boxes boxes madness and all these kind of terms where you know boxers and fighters and now we see it in the ufc who have sustained too many knocks to the head um really do suffer this impairment of neurological function and uh delayed cognitive uh, processing and capacity and then just irrationality of thought and behavioural issues later mm. in life. Um, just the effect on mental health mm. in general. And like not even relating it to CTE because it doesn't have to be that. Like you went through a period where it was a little bit rocky after your major concussion in mm. 2014. So like to relate it back to what you experienced, like what type of things did you experience in those weeks to months to years after that concussion um 
so yeah i guess my case in and of itself um and and, and one thing that i'm grateful for with, with like cycling and the sport that i did is that yes i had suffered some bike crashes and some concussions and then the the, de the really you know severe one as well but i wasn't subject to um, multiple frequent yeah. head injuries right um but what but what's frequent you know like is it once a year is that frequent or is it every yeah. month um so i mean post my one uh, well generally so, so some background on that i was racing what's called a criterion yeah um, which is where you race your bike in a, in a big pack around a small well, it was like a one kilometer circuit and i had uh i wasn't going too well at the time and i was sprinting out of a corner uh, to try and catch back up to the group so you uh, <laughs> yeah and um i basically had my head down and rode straight into the back of a dual cab view which shouldn't have been on the track yeah yeah but but that but it was so um and came to a dead stop and whether i hit it at 35 or 40k an hour i don't know but it was from that to a dead stop and the what you know stopped me was my head literally only um so i lost consciousness for maybe you know like i said five ten minutes that's what i've heard don't remember a lot in the hours after of course or anything really um but basically what happens in that instance after that kind of brain injury or trauma to the brain is that you'll have a mri run um to see if you have any brain bleeds that are obvious or swelling and if there isn't then it's kind of like okay well your acute risk is like not too bad mm -hmm. and by that i mean like acute risk of death or um cognitive like brain death yeah right but this was in 2014 it was 2014 so things uh, yeah. have advanced since then of course yes definitely but the general um uh, i guess advice that i got was to uh rest for three weeks not do too much not uh, exert myself mentally and or physically um and then just start to get back into things and i'll be fine right um, but that, of course, definitely wasn't uh, my lived experience, no. to say the least. I remember visiting you and you could barely hold a conversation. I think I spoke to you well, on that hour before, well, more I, than I spoke to you. Well, I still can't hold a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but what did you experience? Because it wasn't even just in that two to three weeks that it affected you. Yeah, so I guess, and, and I like to think now that like I've prob like put that behind me, that so this is years back, right? This is how many years? What, eight. 2014? So eight years ago. Um so in, and it's hard to put an absolute time frame on it, I guess in the probably 12 months after, I was well remember I was trying to cycle at a high level. And what I found then was that generally like my, even my aerobic capacity was affected. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't performing well on the bike like I other, like was prior. Um, I started university and basically failed my first year of university and to put context a few years prior to that you graduated from our school as the ducks mm. so like you were a bright cookie like you you weren't one that you would think that would fail out of university especially not the first year yeah um and yeah i guess i just generally found memory so like retention of information difficult um learning new things and generally just retaining it. Like I would kind of understand things, go home, and then it's like try and apply it and it would be gone. Mm. So that was really like the main frustration for me. Mm. Um, and with that come a lot of, um, I guess, anxiety, but then, you know, you, it's hard not to get depressed when you are not what you were prior, yeah. if that makes sense, you know, and you know that, and that's difficult to kind of com come to terms with. But then remember as well, it is a, like those, uh post-concussive symptoms right they they do they do generally um i guess diminish over time and you do kind of recover right but it's definitely a long pro it was a much longer process than i expected hmm. and um, i don't think that is spoken about mm. enough 